Welcome back to our series on creating an API with the Nest framework for Node.js. In the previous video, I introduced you to the Nest framework, showed you how to use the Nest CLI to create a new project, and walked you through the different parts of the Nest template project. In this video, I'll show you how to use the CLI to build your own to-do list API. This will include an endpoint that returns a JSON list of tasks, and one that allows you to look up a task by its ID. Let's get started. Now the great thing about the Nest template project is it demonstrates all of the components we need to build our own applications. So let's go ahead and create our to-do list API. First, we'll create a to-do module. Head down to the console and run the command nest generate module, and then the name of the module, in this case, to-do. The CLI gives us a list of changes that it's made. It created a new folder with a to-do.module.ts file inside. It's also updated the app module. And as we can see from our imports array in the app module decorator, the to-do module has been added for us, saving us time. As we can see, our to-do module is empty. We need to create a controller to manage our tasks on the to-do list. So let's head down to a console and run the nest g command, g being an alias for generate. We want a controller. We'll call it tasks, and this will be in the to-do module. By default, the CLI will create our controllers in folders, but just to keep things neat, in this case, we'll use the dash dash flat command to keep everything in the root of the to-do folder. Nest has created two files for us, a controller file and a spec file that contains our test. It's also updated the to-do module for us, adding the controller to our controllers array in the module decorator. Here we have a controller with the tasks root specified. This means that Nest will pass any requests on the forward slash tasks URL to functions in this class. So let's create a get tasks function. And for now, let's just throw a new not implemented exception. We'll add the get decorator so Nest knows this function is available to respond to requests. Now, if we run our application with npm run start, open up Postman and call our forward slash tasks endpoint, we see that Nest has translated our not implemented exception into a nice 501 not implemented status. Now let's implement our get tasks function. It's a good idea to keep our controllers as simple as possible, so we'll put our business logic into a new service. Let's open the command line and run the nest g service command. We want to create a task service underneath the to-do module, and as we can see, the CLI has created our service for us and also updated our to-do module. Before we implement our get tasks function, let's create a class to hold information about the items on our to-do list. So let's go and create a task.model.ts file in our to-do folder, and we'll add a class that has an ID, which will be a number, a description of the task that needs doing, and a flag is complete to specify whether the task is complete or not. Back in our task service, let's create an array of tasks and just add some sample data. We'll create a find all tasks method that just returns its array. And this is the function that we will call from our get tasks endpoint. Now let's return to our task controller and we'll use dependency injection to bring the task service into our class. We'll create a constructor and as a parameter, we'll add a task service specifying the task service type. Let's remove our not implemented exception and replace this with a call to the find all tasks method on the task service. Now we can run this application, call the tasks endpoint and see we have a nicely formatted JSON array with our sample data. Notice we didn't have to do any JSON serialization directly. Nest did this all for us. Next, we want to implement an API endpoint that allows us to look up single tasks by their ID. So first of all, back in our task service, let's add another function find task by ID. This takes an ID as a parameter, returns a single task model and filters a task array to return the first task it finds with that ID. Back in our controller, we'll add a get task by ID function with an ID as a parameter. We'll add the get decorator, but this time we'll specify the colon task ID root template. This will configure the get task by ID function to respond to requests made on the tasks forward slash task ID root. 
When nest passes the URL, it will take the next parameter it finds after tasks and assign it the name task ID. So we need to tell the function that the task ID from the URL should be set as the ID parameter in the function. And to do this, we'll use the param decorator on the ID and then pass the task ID name into here. Notice we exclude the colon in this function. We'll look up the task by ID using the service function we just created. We'll check if the task exists. If it doesn't, we'll throw a new not found exception. This will translate to a 404 not found error if the task does not exist. If it does exist, we just return the task. Finally, we can run our application and call the tasks endpoint with an ID we know exists. So tasks forward slash three returns our finished recording YouTube video task. But if we specify an ID that doesn't exist, we'll get a nicely formatted 404 error with the message task ID not found. In the next video, I'll show you how to create and update task items using the post and put endpoints. I'll also show you how to validate incoming requests. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, then please do drop us a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching. Happy coding. I will see you next time.